Hey everybody, so I've added a few little details to the surface of this model so that we can see exactly how much detail is preserved. Um, other than that, it's the same model that we left off with, and we're now going to make it low poly. How do we do that? Well, it's pretty easy. Go over here into the Geometry tab, and then here in the Z Remesh or Submenu, and hit Z Remesh. You can change the target polygon count to change how many polygons you're aiming for. Um, right now, we are aiming for just a few. Uh, 0.5, which is very low. And then you can see that this is the density of the model that we get. Um, so we're going to undo that. We can lower this as much as we want. How about down to 0.1? Let's create a really, really low poly version of this, just to push our luck, right? Well, there it is. That's fine. It's, uh, it's fine, but... We obviously lost all of the details that we needed. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to preserve all that detail. And here's where the subtool menu comes into play. Normally, the subtool menu contains all of your various sub meshes and operators and stuff. Uh, in this case, all it contains is our base mesh, which is fine. That's all we needed to contain. Hit duplicate to create a copy. Rename that copy low poly so you know what's going on. And now what we're going to do is we're going to Z remesh that low poly object. So down here in geometry, Z remesher. There it is. So that's obviously our low poly version. Uh, we can increase the number of polys. Sure, why not? Uh, we'll use this divide operator. You can hit Control D or click divide and create some subdivisions. And as you can see by dragging these subdivisions around, uh, it becomes higher and higher poly and softer and softer surface. Uh, we're going to go ahead and create a lot of subdivisions. And the reason is because we have a lot of surface texture. Uh, five is pretty good. Six is probably best. Um, now this is obviously going to depend on exactly how good your machine is, because this is already at 1.396 million quad polygons, as you can see in the corner. So um, it might be a little bit of a load depending on your machine quality. Either way, go up to the subtool, make sure that both of these don't have eyeballs at the moment so that you can just switch between them, see? So there's the difference. We obviously don't want that to be the case. We want this low poly one to be identical. So let's turn both of these visible and make sure the low poly is selected. And then here in the subtool menu, there's a project tab. So just hit project. This will take some time uh, because it is a million or so verts. Um, and uh, when it's done, it should look identical. There we go. So if we go back up here and we turn off that base model again, uh, we can just flick between them and you can see there's only a couple of small differences. Uh, due to the incredibly low poly version that we created, um, there is some damage to the interpretation. I think that's fine for this statue. Uh, we'll be cleaning that up in the next episode, though, if you want to know how to do that. Um, but this should work pretty well, don't you think? If if you see this in the game, you're not going to be, oh my gosh, yeah, you're going to be like, oh, that's pretty pretty high high poly, um, even though it's it's not going to be. Anyway. In order to finish exporting this, we're going to want to export that low, low poly map, uh, low, low poly mesh with a map to make it look high poly. And to do that, we're going to want to go down here into geometry and go back down to the lowest subdivision level. Um, this is important because otherwise a lot of these next operations are going to complain. Uh, so just make sure at the lowest subdivision level. You're going to want to go up here into Z plugin. All of these are great. You're going to want to use all of these in time. Uh, but what we're going to want to do is use the UV map, the UV master, and unwrap it. That'll quickly unwrap your model. If you don't unwrap your model, then all of your efforts to create textures are going to go nowhere. So make sure that your model is unwrapped. And if your texture work does go nowhere, remember that you forgot to unwrap your model. <laughs> now we're going to use this texture map um, button, the normal map button here. Uh, another option is to use the... Uh, Z plugin multi-map exporter. This is actually a better option for reasons I'll go into very shortly here, but we're going to just do it manually this once, uh, just so that you understand what's going on. So this is all fine. All the defaults are fine. We hit create normal map, create normal map, and it quickly creates this normal map. There it is. We're going to want to go ahead and clone that to the texture palette. Once it's cloned to the texture palette, we can use this texture dropdown to work with it. Uh, now we could hit export, but there is a problem. 
all of the textures that are created by ZBrush are mysteriously flipped on the V axis, which is the, the Y axis for, for textures. So when you go in here to the Multimap Exporter, you can see that you got flip V. Yeah, that's because they know that they are just wrong um, and that nobody else uses their screwed up backwards V axis. But since we did this manually, we have to flip it ourselves. Uh, and that's what we'll do. Just bloop. And then we're going to go ahead and export this. It's going to want to export it as a PSD. You're going to want to switch over to a PNG because um, otherwise, you know, it'll be a Photoshop file. I guess if you want to edit it more, that, that's fine. And then we're also going to want to export our model. Anyway, I'm going to click here to do that. Export it as an OBJ. That's fine. Um, but keep in mind that if you're exporting a lot of stuff, don't use this. Instead, use the Z plugin, FBX exporter, importer, or the sub tool master, just go ahead and look through those various options. You'll find what you need. It's a lot more straightforward than you think. It's just not covered in any tutorials because I don't know, it's not. <laughs> so now we have gone ahead and created some low poly, uh, a low poly mesh and a texture. We're gonna pop on over into Unity and drop that stuff right in. So here's our OBJ, here's our PNG, drop it in. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new texture, a new material for it which we'll call statue. And we're just gonna drop this smoothness way down. So we drop this low poly object into the scene and we spin it around and we bring it up here. Yep. And you can see that it's pretty low poly. If, you, if you're curious about how low poly, you can always switch over into shaded wireframe mode. That's how low poly. Um, it's not super low poly, but it's definitely low poly enough to be a game asset. Uh, and then what we're gonna to wanna to do is assign it the statue texture and then assign the statue texture our normal map. Uh, keep in mind that if you're using the uh, the exporter that exports all this stuff, it'll actually export a material file for you. It did in this case too, but that stuff should make it into Unity intact. So feel free to to do that right. Let's just drop this because it's really really bright. There we go. And you can see that we have that surface texture and we preserved all this stuff that we wanted to preserve. The only question is whether or not the G axis, the green axis needs to be inverted. Um, I don't think it does, but I've seen a lot of tutorials that claim it does. So if you notice that it seems like um, some of your bumps are backwards or something, it may be that the G axis, it needs to be inverted. And the way to fix that is to um, just tap here, flip G. Uh, but I think that was the old Unity. Unity changed how it was handling textures, uh, normal maps, a while back. Uh, and I think that now you don't have to. But I'll leave it there for your um, education, I guess. So that's how you do it. It's now in Unity. And it's now a, uh, a low-poly asset with high-poly textures. And keep in mind that you can do all your painting in ZBrush, all that stuff. It all works fine when it's exported to Unity. You can even do things like vertex displacement. Uh, and all that stuff. So it's a pretty easy way to make your model pop into Unity and it works fine. Um, the thing that might not work fine is the actual Z remapping. So in the next episode, we're going to talk about how not to get a bunch of weird stuff happening and how to optimize your Z remap so that it actually functions. This is especially important for animated characters. So if you're doing character work, pay attention in the next episode. <laughs>